Good evening. It's been confirmed a student from Canesham is among at least 10 Britons killed after a plane was shot down. The Malaysia airline plane he was travelling on took off from Amsterdam yesterday morning, heading to Kuala Lumpur. It was brought down in eastern Ukraine, killing almost 300 people. The Prime Minister has described the incident as appalling, shocking and horrific. Hannah Gamlin reports. An excellent student, fun-loving and happy. Ben Pocock boarded flight MH17 on his journey to Western Australia. The talented academic from Canesham had just finished his second year at university and was about to start further study abroad. His last tweets marked his success and anticipation, before a final post saying, should be in bed recovering, but I haven't packed yet, and I leave in 18 hours. A day later, flight MH17, travelling from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, came down in Ukraine, killing all 298 people on board. Today, investigations point to it being shot down by a ground-to-air missile. Speculation continues as to who is responsible. David Cameron has pledged to hold them to account. To make sure that this site can be properly investigated, to make sure uh, that the bodies of loved ones can be properly uh, recovered. Uh, all governments, the Russian government, uh, the Ukrainian government, all of them must do everything they can so that we get to the bottom of what happened in this absolutely dreadful loss of life. At the St Mary Redcliffe Cricket Club, where Ben played with his father and grandfather, there is silence this evening. A planned fundraising event postponed as a mark of respect. Ben was a very affable sort of man who gave a lot to the club really, uh, not only on the field but off the field. He was both a talented sportsman and also both a good batsman and a bowler. The club were devastated. Ben's family tonight asked for privacy, to come to terms with the loss of their child that many knew as a wonderful, caring young man. Hannah Gamlin, ITV News. A coroner has cleared expedition leaders of neglect after 17-year-old schoolboy from Wiltshire was killed by a polar bear. Horatio Chapel from Bishopston was attacked as he lay in his tent during a camping expedition in the Arctic Circle. Martin Douse reports. On the Svalbard expedition in the days before his death, Horatio Chapel was described by several witnesses at this inquest as highly motivated, keen to learn, keen to soak it all up under the wing of the British Schools Exploring Society, of which his grandfather had been a past president. But the adventure of a lifetime was to end in tragedy, when an elderly and starving polar bear got into the expedition camp, dragged Horatio out of his tent and mauled him to death. The inquest had heard that the night before the attack, Horatio's team had decided not to mount a night watch as a precaution against bears, but to rely instead on a tripwire alert system. Ideally, this would be rectangular, spread widely around the tents. A bear crossing the wire would trigger shotgun shells to fire off. But the group had only been supplied with enough equipment to make a smaller triangular perimeter. When the bear did come, the shells failed to go off anyway, and it was quickly among the tents with no warning. Horatio's family had asked the assistant coroner Ian Singleton to consider that these inadequacies in equipment amounted to neglect on the part of the society. But in his narrative verdict, he said the testing of the tripwire system meant the team leaders could have reasonably expected it to work and that the likely reason it didn't was because the bear stumbled into one of the supporting posts and knocked the shotgun shell out of its firing position. He said that there had been an appropriate assessment of the risks posed by bears and that the behaviour of this bear was more aggressive and unpredictable than would have been expected. Scott Bennell Smith in the middle of this group was in Horatio's tent, along with Patrick Flinders here in the white shirt. Both were attacked and injured as it ran amok in the camp, but in the confusion neither saw what happened to Horatio. Both group leaders, Spike Reed and Andy Ruck, were seriously injured too as they tried to fight the bear off. There were questions at the inquest over the amount of rifle training given. The group had been issued with a World War II German rifle, which misfired four times during the attack because its safety catch was on the wrong setting before Mr Reed finally managed to fire it and shoot the bear dead. After the verdict, Horatio's family issued a statement saying, we take some small comfort from the fact that Horatio's courageous actions may have distracted the bear, preventing others from being killed. 
He was seen by witnesses facing the bear, confronting it with all that he had, his screaming voice, his empty hands and his raised arms. Martin Dow, ITV News, Salisbury Coroner's Court. There's fierce debate over plans to merge fire services in Dorset and Wiltshire. The fire services need to save millions of pounds because grants from the government are both being cut. They had agreed it was best, the best way to save money, but now Wiltshire is calling for a rethink after new fire authority bosses were voted in. People in Wiltshire and Dorset are going to be asked for their views on the merge. I think if the evidence is there to say that we are trying to protect frontline services and this is the way that we're doing it to address future funding cuts but to make sure that our response arrangements are as present I think that will generally get a thumbs up from the public. Bristol City Council say it will keep a close watch on an Avonmouth waste company following an outbreak of flies. Bumaco's operations were suspended following an infestation of the insects in nearby homes. Now the company is starting to work again, but the council says they must stick to strict working conditions or face prosecution. A school in Bath has appointed a new head teacher after the resignation of Kim Sparling. She stepped down following criticism of the running of Oldfield School. Matthew Woodville, who's been acting up in the role, will take over the job permanently. Wiltshire's Police and Crime Commissioner has praised a local MP for saving his life after a heart attack. Angus McPherson, who's 60, collapsed during a meeting in Trowbridge. But local MP Andrew Murison, who's a former Navy doctor, gave him a heart massage until an air ambulance arrived. And hundreds of shoppers queued up outside a new Primark, which opened in Bath this morning. The discount clothing chain announced it was taking over the former BHS site last year and has spent six months refurbishing the shop, creating 320 jobs. Finally, the Bristol Harbour Festival officially got underway this evening. It's one of the biggest free festivals in the whole country and over the weekend, over a quarter of a million people are expected to attend. There will be music, circus, jet-powered flyboarding and, of course, the fireworks on Saturday night. Here's Richard Payne with a preview of all the action. It started in 1971 as a small-scale event to save the docks from being filled in. 43 years on, the Harbour Festival has done so much more than that. For tens of thousands of food fans, the focus falls on Queen Square, which takes on an international flavour. The last year, very, very busy here, very busy. And this year, good weather and busy as well. Crowds were already building today and they'll grow further tonight when local and international offerings fill the music stage. I think this one has lots of appeal because families can come and um, it's just a nice day out. Just to see people and enjoying themselves. Bristol's a wonderful city and it, this highlights it. This year, College Green will be the home of circus and more, courtesy of Bristol's own Cirque Bijou, who will overnight transform this space into a space-themed adventure playground. This is our 14th year doing it. Um, the majority of our work is national or international now. It's a lot of work in London, a lot of work overseas, and it's really it's important for us to do some work in Bristol. Another new feature of this two-mile-long arena is at Wapping Wharf, behind the M Shed, with a garden at its heart and a stage for comedy and cabaret. It is yet another addition to Bristol's reputation as Britain's festival capital. I think it's just such a creative city. That's what I love about it. I'm, I'm not born in Bristol, but I'm born again in Bristol. <laughs> um, it's, there's theatre and music and art everywhere you go. There's so many creative people here. And if that's not enough to get you excited about the weekend ahead, maybe this will, yes. The much-anticipated fireworks display is confirmed for tomorrow night. Richard Payne, ITV News at the Bristol Harbour Festival. So will the weather hold out for the rest of the weekend? Here's Kate with the forecast. Good evening. Well, stand by for a pretty stormy, lively night. We've got a lot of thundery downpours pushing up from the south. Now we're going to get thunder, lightning, hail, and we have a risk of flooding as we could see a lot of rain in a very short space of time, possibly two to three inches in just one hour. And we have got weather warnings in place for that. So a pretty stormy night and temperatures pretty muggy as well, just to top it all off at around 17 or 18 Celsius. Now those showers will push northwards as we go through tomorrow morning. We'll get a little bit of respite around lunchtime, but then as we go into the afternoon, 
yet more showers will be pushing up again some thunder and lightning a lot more rain on our pretty wet ground but there will be some sunshine in between those showers and then the sunshine highs up around 24 celsius after that thankfully things do calm down a little bit there will be a shower or two around on sunday but mostly dry and sunny and then we've got a bit of high pressure moving in for monday and tuesday dry sunny and warm Thanks, Kate. Well, that's all from us here tonight. You can, of course, get plenty more news from the region on our website. But whatever you're doing this weekend, have a great time. Goodbye.